What's up guys? It's a bright and early Sunday morning and on Sundays we deadlift. So I thought it'd be a good idea. I'm probably going to go for a max deadlift today or at least see the upper limits of my strength just so I can program appropriately in the future. That'd be a good idea to film the process and maybe talk a little bit about what I do. Now there's a little bit more people than I thought were here on a Sunday morning, mainly because I came later than I thought. So I might not get the courage to talk in the gym, but if not, then I'll do some voiceover work. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be a deadlift workout, nice and easy. I gotta get out quick uh, because I have to actually go into work today because we're doing a project. So that sucks, but um, like I said, I usually do shoulders, but I feel like I'm a little bit tired this morning anyway, so it's not gonna be too bad if I skip the, the workout. So what we're going to do is we're going to warm up. I'm going to do a bunch of heavy singles and just basically work my way up to my max. And then that way I can use that max parameter to program other things that I'll explain later. So let's go ahead and hop in mid-workout or warm-up now. All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me over the playing music, music that's playing. But I just finished warming up. I did some hanging leg raises just to open up my hips. And then I did some side twirls, again, to open up my hips and my spine. And then I also did some, um, some back extensions just to warm up my back. I also did some lat pull downs, just light work, warm up my lats. And also some leg extensions and leg curls just to warm up my legs. So now what I'm going to do, I've got the bar all set up right there. I'm going to start out with a simple 135, just checking my form and whatnot. And I actually videotape that so I can go over some of my cues that I look for when deadlifting. So, so the first thing you're going to want to do is line up your feet the way you want it. I am a more conventional narrow deadlifter, so the way I set my feet up is a little bit inside the knurling of the barbell. Now this depends on what is your preference and what you're comfortable with. A lot of pe some people might like a wider conventional stance. Some people might prefer sumo, and that totally depends on you and what you feel most comfortable with. Uh, the second thing is you want your feet to be um, smothered by the barbell, and what I mean by that is uh, when you look down, you want the barbell to be sort of in the middle of your foot vertically and that'll make sure that the barbell isn't too far away from you when you go to start the lift. <laughs> Lastly, something quirky I like to do, you might want to try it out. Uh, I like to screw my feet down into place and this just sort of gives me into the head this sort of gets me into the mental space of uh, creating a firm base for me to start the lift. The second cue I'm doing is sort of relaxing my shoulders and relaxing my lats. Uh, sort of just extending my arms as low as possible. This'll, this is the starting position you want when you're doing the lift. And what I'm doing is I'm tapping my legs to make sure I can't go lower on my legs uh, for my arms to be sagging. I then go immediately straight down, bend down uh, and, and grip up the bar. My hand placement is a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, being that I put my thumb on the knurling, I extend my hand out like you guys see, and then I uh, remove my thumb into regular grip position. In this step here, I'm raising up my butt a little bit and giving my stomach some room for me to take a big breath of air. And what this does is I, put, I leave that breath of air inside my stomach and I tense up my core. And what this does is it stabilizes your spine and also allows you to complete the lift easier because you have a good line of compression in your stomach. Also, if you have mirrors in the surrounding area, this is a great place to check your shoulder placement. Uh, you really want it to be in line with the bar. You don't want it to be in front, and you don't want to be behind it. Finally, I go back to the starting deadlift position. I make sure my back is straight and my core is stable from my breath. I tug on the bar a little bit to remove some of the extra slack out of my back, sort of just reasserting um, the relaxed back. I move my lats backwards a little bit, and then I lift up. 
you want to start off the lift by raising up your quads and your hamstrings up until about your knees and about the same at the same time you are pushing the barbell backwards uh, with your hands in order to keep it close to you you don't want it to be far away because then it changes the movement and things get a little wonky and dangerous after you after you get about to your knees you're going to want to push forward or towards the barbell with your hips in order to drive the barbell up and complete the movement and that's it. So I just loaded up the scene on the bar. Uh, 275 was moving pretty well, so I feel like today's going to be a good day. But for 315, I thought it would be a good idea to speak on lifting belts because around three plates is around when I start wearing my lifting belt. And I just wanted to comment on it because you'll see a lot of people in gyms just wearing their lifting belt around, um, either tight or maybe they have a cloth when they're just walking around with. And that's really defeating the purpose of the belt. The belt is supposed to be uh, a bracing mechanism for when you're lifting heavy and whatnot. And it's, like I've heard a bunch of excuses like, there's something wrong with my back, so I gotta wear one, or a lot of things. It's, a lot of times it's just like self-diagnosed things that people feel like they should wear a belt for. And then you also have the ego lifters who like they're really jack at the gym and they just feel like wearing a belt is one of those like I look cool factor things. It's the same thing with the wrist wraps. Um, you shouldn't be wearing your wrist wraps throughout the whole workout. So yeah, so usually when I wear a belt, the point is to make it as tight as possible to create uh, a tighter core or a greater compression on the inside of the core uh, in order to help you complete the lift. So really my advice is to only wear a belt when you're doing, um, put it on right before the, the set, make it tight, uh, and then take it off immediately after you complete the set. And I feel like you'll start seeing better results. Also, do not go for the cloth belts. Uh, you really want something leather, something nice leather with uh, some padding in the back. Uh, cloth belts, they just don't have the, uh, they just don't have the ability to keep the shape of your spine in line like a leather belt can, and they're really cheap. That's why they're like 40 50 bucks. I, I suggest getting a nice belt that costs around like 80 to 100 bucks. Anything above that is like you're going for luxury. But yeah, that's my piece on belts, and we'll continue with our heavy signals. I'm not gonna let you get the chance. Hey, sorry about that guy. The music was just too loud. You couldn't hear me in this clip. But essentially, you guys saw I wasn't able to get the 500 the first time. But, but, it was because my grip gave out. So, that was bound to happen. I was using like a, a hook grip with no straps. And when you get heavy, you just need to incorporate straps. Luckily, the guy behind me in the red said he'd give me some chalk and we're gonna try the lift again. Guys, 
so we were super successful in pulling that 500. I actually think I left some weight on the table uh, because I had a period of grinding, but at some point just like lifted up. So I was talking to uh, the guy who gave me the chalk. He was watching me. He was like, I probably left like 15, 20 pounds on the bar, which I'm not mad at because that's the first time I ever reached up to 500. So we got it. I'm gonna say my max is 500 until I prove otherwise. But yeah, super successful. Um, so now, uh, but I'm sure I already explained to you my cues and what I look for for when I deadlift. This will take place of the deadlift cues video that um, this is probably gonna come out before my other two videos. But I'm, I have some videos coming out teaching people how to do the three big lifts, not really teaching, but just explaining how I go through doing um, the cues and the form that I look for when I perform the three big lifts. Uh, starting with deadlift, of course, that I did today and uh, bench press and squat. I already got those videos made. I'm just not sure when I'm gonna put those out. I'll probably do the deadlift one uh, posted first just because it's more of a vlog, like putting you guys through workout and whatnot. But yeah, man, super happy. Um, if you guys have any questions, DM me on Instagram at who else but underscore Abe. But for now, I gotta go home and get ready to go into work. So super successful thank you guys for watching if you like this video please hit that like button and uh more con more content coming check out my other videos and subscribe for more so sun's peeking out let's go to work peace guys